The Defense of Kamino The defense of Kamino was widely regarded as one of the grittiest defenses the Republic has ever had to endure. With the Republic losing multiple Padawans and upwards of three quarters of the clone fighting force and a Jedi Master. The battle was very similar to Stalingrad, as like the Russians, the clones had lost an estimated 80% of the city and were holding on to dear life, with many fights taking place in learning and DNA centers. Although the clones were beginning to cave in and to exhaust, the fight was not yet finished. Background one of the most critical parts of the battle was not on the battlefield itself, but was in a Republic spy network. The reason this spy network was so instrumental in the Republic's fight on Kamino was because they were able to come into possession of the battle plans for Topoka City. This, in turn, stopped any surprise attack the Separatists were previously able to launch. Without the plans on Kamino's attack coming to light, the small and unprepared force situated on Kamino would have been obliterated before help could have arrived. Air Defense The first part of the battle was largely fought in space. Thanks to Republic intelligence, the army was able to prepare for the battle. This led to three squadrons being formed. One squadron was tasked with defending the city on the ground, while the other two were composed of starfighters. These fighters, in total having eight Jedi, were able to fend off a decent portion of droid forces before they were able to reach the ground. Although, after a hard-fought battle in the air, Jedi General Cossex was killed in a hail of gunfire and the droids were able to push through onto Kamino. This marked the beginning of the ground assault. The ground assault. The droid forces were eventually able to push through and landed several troop transports on Topoka City. The battle was for a long time Separatist dominated with a large amount of clones retreating into vital areas such as areas with defenseless clone cadets and DNA centers. At one point of the battle, Alpha-17 realized that Separatist forces were going to overrun the breeding labs and initiated a self-destruct sequence, which would have destroyed the next generation of clones. However, Jedi General Shakti did not agree. This resulted in some very quick thinking by Alpha-17, where he instructed Obi-Wan Kenobi to tear down the bridge leading into the center. He also told them to create a makeshift plug which would in turn stop Kamino's oceans from flooding the labs. This was one of many heroic and even suicidal acts that the clones defending the city had done to defend their home. Aftermath Although the clones were wounded and exhausted, their morale was at the highest it could be, as the clones were defending their own home and their own brethren. It was because of all these factors combined that the Republic held out, with many clone squads fighting to the last man to defend, and many individual clones fighting with a primitive suicidal rage. Despite the odds, the Republic were eventually able to recapture the entire city while routing the remaining Separatist fighting force. The numbers of the clone army were at an all-time low, and a large portion of the army were wounded. However, if it wasn't for these early generation of clones fighting for Kamino, the Republic would have ceased to exist. Whether this is a good or bad thing is completely up to you, 